Hello, welcome again. In this video, we're going to try to finalize the first floor plan layout. We're not going to detail every single thing that should be present on the first floor plan when you submit the documents for construction permit. However, we're going to cover most of it. So let's begin. First, take a look at your drawing and the, the PDF that was uploaded on uh, week 5 folder and make sure you have everything regarding dimensions aligned. For instance, I've noticed in the last PDF there, that I have uploaded on to week 4, this dimension was missing, so please go ahead and add that dimension and check every other exterior dimension. Let's begin with the most important thing is try to name the spaces that you're going to uh, design. The way you do this, you go up to your content of blocks, which there is an updated version of blocks also in, in week five. I recommend you to copy uh, the things that were added to that block, which were plumbing, appliances, and miscellaneous. O only those things. And, and another thing that was changed is when you click on this text, uh, it was under text height labeled as one foot. So it, were, it, it, it was bigger and I changed it to be eight inches under text height. I recommend you to do the same so that it, it fits in better on your floor plan. Everything else regarding blocks stayed the same. So again, just the plumbing appliances and miscellaneous, you can copy paste there. You, you can just start um, the entire block file and it should have all of those things already in it. And you can copy paste that file into your drawings. Okay, so you go ahead and uh, copy, you select everything here, press CO, go down and put it right here. Essentially try to lay it out um, based on the PDF. This is going to be the great room, the gathering area, or you can also call it dining area, kitchen, pantry, mudroom, powder room, which is just a, a room that it's a, essentially half bath or a bathroom that does not have a shower or a tub, a study and a foyer, as well as a garage. Garage, as you can see, uh, all of these rooms have a material that we're hoping to install in that area. For instance, in the study, we're going to have carpet. In the powder room, we're going to have vinyl. In the great room, again, carpet, then vinyl and vinyl and so on and so forth. The only one that is going to be different is the garage. And, and we're going to include a few notes here. So go ahead and copy those notes. Make sure whenever you click on text, you click on multi-line text uh, because that will allow you to press enter and you can go to the next line. If you use a single line, that's exactly what it that's exactly what it sounds like. It will be a single line and you won't be able to press enter. Why it's there, I don't necessarily know. There's really no reason that I can think of. You can you should always use single line and you should never use multi-line text. In my opinion, you should always use multi-line text unless you have another very compelling reason which I cannot come up with. There might be a few labels here and there in this document that uses a single line, but that's because I copied it from somewhere else. Okay, so go ahead and copy all of this. Uh, just a brief in info about this six inch concrete slab is pretty standard. It's also going to be six inch because it's going to bear some load. Slope eighth of an inch per 12 inches uh, to the overhead door which this label wasn't on the PDF. So go ahead and uh, copy this label. It's actually located under the overhead door area. I believe, yeah, right here. You can copy this label and put it right here. So 
slope, then control, and every line um, typically corresponds, typically, not always, typically corresponds to a new point that somebody needs to take account of. For instance, CJ stands for control join, which um, just the basics of control joints, they're necessary so that, that the material doesn't shrink or expand too much. Every at, this sign right here is an at sign, uh, 20 feet on center each way. Half inch drywall on common walls, meaning on this wall and this wall, not on the exterior walls. Well, pretty much you can also put it on the exterior walls, that's, that's fine. And 5 8 of an inch fire rated drywall, which is slightly thicker and different on the ceiling because there will be a living space above the garage. This is just a few code things. All right, once you do this, uh, I encourage you to put labels of the arrows of the stairs. This stair from the foyer is going to go up, but we're also combining the up uh, stair, the, the stair going upwards with the stair going downwards. The one that's going downwards comes through the gathering area and you can see down arrow. These arrows are located in your notes. You can copy, paste them. You can also shrink them, which in my case I have, I shrunk them. Don't shrink them here, let them be the same here. So put them here, put them here, and uh, put this arrow right here. Make sure whenever you copy any text, you try to read it in a horizontal format or in a vertical format tilted towards the left. Try not to, try not to uh, do this. Uh, there is a science behind this. Uh, just for now, believe me, if, you, if you'd like to know more about this, you can go ahead and ask me this question during our, discuss, uh, during our discussion sessions. Otherwise, please keep it tilted towards the left side. All right, let's start with an interesting portion. Um, since we've already talked about labeling the rooms and the materials, let's also show the division, uh, where the place where the flooring changes from one to another. In this case, we're going to draw a line uh, on first wall slater, and it will be a yellow line. Typically, you can see our first walls are white. However, we're going to go manually and change our color to yellow because that is going to help us tremendously. So once you do, you do this, you draw a straight line and you essentially use the same line and put a horizontal line that separates these two and on the top you put one floor at the bottom another floor. Since we have those transitions happen several times, you can copy this and rotate it, similar to what I've done here. Because here we have vinyl, here we have carpet. So vinyl and carpet, we have to put a transition. This is just a random location. You don't have to be precise, but make sure it's slightly offset from the door. To be honest, it probably should be offset even more, just a bit. Again, it's not a precise science right now. We're not going to get into how, where exactly it needs to be offset. All of those things can be done at a later stage. And over here, we're transitioning from vinyl to the carpet. So you want to put one as well over here. Now, I also added a few dimensions that are, are extra and just to give whoever is going to be uh, doing um, shelving in certain areas, a few directions. For instance, this is going to be our linen area, which this text right here is under first notes, the same way as this first notes. Essentially, this is the same note, but copied over here and rotated. This is gonna be our linen closet, obviously for linens. And this line right here, which is offset one foot away from, uh, from this wall. This is going to be uh, under first cab layer and everything else stays the same. 
essentially this is going to represent our shelving and our shelving will be one foot away from the uh, from the wall and uh, the depth of the entire closet framing wise is two foot and one inch which if you add up drywall on both sides half an inch and half inch you end up with a two foot closet or linen closet which is fine same thing over here however uh, here you have two lines the f the one that's closer to the door this line is going to be um probably not the best view but one foot uh, and and a half or you can put one foot one it doesn't quite matter but the other line is going to be offset from this line by two inches so this second line closest to the wall will be two inches away from it and if you click on it you can see i changed the line type to hidden right now it doesn't represent it this way uh, there are many reasons harakat is very complicated when it comes to this uh, but the best way you can do is try to type in regen all which it regenerates AutoCAD's view because AutoCAD wants to preserve the memory it uses. Uh, and the way it does it, it's essentially it, it copies the screen that you were on before and it doesn't necessarily, if you zoom out too much, you will not see those dashed lines. So it tries to preserve the memory it uses and copies the same view when you zoom in, if you come back to it some other time. So if you want to essentially essentially refresh your screen, you type in regen and click on regen all. That should fix it. All right, that's our closet. CL stands for closet. Again, we put a dimension into that area. As well, we have a pantry. And in the pantry, we're going to have shelves. Again, first cab layer, and those shelves are offset one foot away from the wall. And that's on this side and on this and on that side. As you can see in the powder room, we have a few things going on. First of all, this uh, represents a pedestal sink. I'm pretty sure mo most of you are familiar with the concept. Right now, we're not going to be too specific about how offset it is from this wall or this wall at this point just put it in there and leave a bit of space on either side this pedestal sink is on first cab layer make sure make sure you know this however the toilet or what's referred to in architecture water closet is under first plumb layer there is a reason to it right now we're not going to get into it and over here, right on top of the toilet, we're calling out for a CRF. CRF stands for Continuous Running Fan. Now, as you can see, it is in the layer that you do not have. This layer is called First Notes Dash Fans at SD. I'm going to make this active. And this is the layer that you need to, to create. Anything specific about this layer, it has a green color, continuous default. So you just create this layer with this name and put it as a green color. That's the only thing you really need to do at this point. All right, and this is, this is a block which is located in your blocks area under miscellaneous, continuous fan. You copy it, you put it right above uh, your toilet. Also, you can see there as there is a smoke detector block. Smoke detector essentially notifies you if there is fire going on in your house, and it lets people throughout the house know but through a very loud uh, loud alarm. That this smoke detector. Uh, there is a code requirement as to where you, you need to put it. For now, we're going to put it at the, um, at the uh, stairs going up and at the stairs going down on this floor. Next, uh, an interesting 
portion is the kitchen. In the kitchen, you have cabinets, you have appliances, you have a sink, and you have, in this case, an island. How we're going to draw this? Well, you already have a layer called first cab. Uh, you can try and make it active. You can double click here. Now you're in, in an active. Uh, now this is your active layer. You can type in L for a line and uh, you can roughly offset again. At this point, we're not going to be very precise. We just want to get it uh, to a point where it looks like a decent floor plan. You can offset it roughly from uh, the edge of this wall by two foot and one eighth of an inch, or you can just make it two feet. That's just fine. From there, all the cabinets in this floor plan will be two feet uh, deep. So this line is two foot long and it can goes, 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 goes until there's another line that intersects it. Another line that is two feet uh, long but in this case, it runs all the way down into the other wall. In your case, what probably was the case earlier for me, uh, this opening was somewhere here. And in this case, if you look at it uh, as it is drawn, drawn right now, you can see that a portion of your lower cabinet is actually stopping at an opening, which is odd. We do not want to do this. It, it's an obstruction. And what essentially I did was I selected, uh, I clicked one time with my left mouse and selected this portion of the wall. Uh, so I included this, this line, and these three lines. Now I'll press S, that stands for stretch, spacebar, and I will pull it roughly uh, seven, eight, six inches in towards the left. Make sure that all of you, uh, that you're pulling it uh, horizontally and not in that some very weird angle. Once you pull it to a, a direction or a, a distance you like, press uh, the left button on your mouse and there you go. All the lines are stretched in, the, in that direction. I'll go back to how I had it. All right, so you drew essentially the base cabinets. You drew a line two foot down all the way to the right. Then you trimmed it here and another uh, line that is two feet offset from this portion of, of the wall and all the way down. Now let's put a refrigerator. You have this block over in this location. Probably forgot to put the note. You copy that note and you put it, I, no, I already put it here. So you put this refrigerator here, uh, you rotate it, make sure it's facing the right direction. This is essentially, it's against the wall, which is fine. Where exactly you want to put it, it's up to you, but I would uh, be cautious putting it clo any, any closer to this door opening. Um, well, it's not really a door, just an opening in the wall uh, because it will be, an again, an obstruction for someone trying to exit from this space or enter this space. So, for instance, in my case, I roughly put it around three foot six away from this wall. Put it here. Your line will be going through it. What you want to do, if you have a line going through the refrigerator, which is not good, Essentially, you click on that line one time with your left mouse, then type in BR, which stands for break. Press space bar, press on the same line, and essentially at the point where you press on this line with your mouse, it will break this line and you drag it up until the point where you want it to stop breaking. This creates two separate lines with an emptiness in between. And then you can simply drag or trim the line to the edges of the refrigerator like this. All right. N next, uh, I would probably jump the gun just a little bit. We would like to also draw the upper cabinets. The two, uh, the two foot deep were the base cabinets, the ones that are sitting on the floor. 
and we also need to draw the ones there's uh, that are um, hung from the wall and those would be in the same layer however the line type will be hidden too since they are essentially above the plane uh, in which we're seeing and showing other items essentially we're cutting through them and that's why all the upper cabinets will be in the hidden two uh, line type uh, the way you want to draw this typically cabinets um, the increments of cabinet design is uh, they change the size every three inches for instance if your cabinet is 12 inches wide which is in this direction then you the next uh, size would be 15 inches the next size would be 18 inches the next size would be 21 inches and so on and so forth in my case uh, it is one foot and six inches and if you add them up it will be 18 so we went from 12 15 18 which is fine it's divisible divisible by three this is a good size of a cabinet at 18 inches i stop and i put the line back to the wall since essentially this represents a cabinet but um, i would like to place a sink right in front of my window not quite centered but it's visually showing as if it is centered which is what we're hoping to do uh, you copy that sink from from the blocks area above and you put it roughly uh, i would first align it to this line right here and then i would pull it one inch up right here on the left side and on the right side of the sink uh, draw a line in the same layer first cab hidden two but however put it under color 30 so you manually select color for this line it's a bit tedious but you have to, you try to do this and put it uh, align it along the edge of uh, the door of the window opening on this side and on this side and once you do this you will see that your cabinet is going to have some space again this space is, ra is random but it is important to have a space between your cabinet and your window because you have to account there will be a trim the interior trim for the window and just visually it looks better make sure you have the same spacing on the other side so it looks like uh, you put some thought into it so you, you go ahead and copy these two lines and you can mirror them. MI stands for mirror and you go through the center of the window and you press and go forward. This is going to essentially mirror those two lines as, um, along the center point of the window. I already have done this. That's why I have this line and another line which I extended towards this side once you do this essentially extend this line all the way through till this point I'll do this again myself to this point make sure everything is perpendicular and uh, this line if that uh, I probably did not clarify this the upper cabinet is offset uh, one foot away from the wall everywhere in this case one foot away one foot away one foot away so this line we extend all the way through again this first cabinet layer hidden two line type offset one foot away from this wall and i would like you to have it first go from wall to wall from here all the way to to this portion of the wall once you do this draw another line from the corner of where your cabinets meet and draw this line one foot long another line one foot long so what i want you to end up with is these two cabinet lines for the upper cabinets intersecting in the middle and this is just your two reference lines again one foot this way one foot this way in between those two lines draw another line and put it for, uh, under first layer under first cab layer and line type hidden two. this is go and delete these two reference lines once you've done this 
uh, press uh, button F for fillet, which allows you to essentially trim two lines and connect them together. Space bar, select two lines you want to trim, this line and this line. And now this portion of the line is gone, which is perfect. Uh, space bar again, this line, this line, and this portion of the line is gone. Now it's a continuous cabinetry, the exact layout we're not worried about. Uh, we can always specify this on an elevation. But what we've done, we've created essentially a corner cabinet, which in reality would be something like this. It would start here and end here. And all of this space would be a corner cabinet. But right now, again, we're not worried about the actual layout of the cabinet. So you've essentially drawn the upper cabinet lines. Over here, we would like to put, to put a range. It's a 30 inch range with an overhead microwave. Where is the microwave in this case? You can see that in between those two grills, there is this 45 degree line goes down and again a 45 degree line. line. That represents your microwave that is overhead. It is in a block, so we don't have to modify anything. We just want to paste it somewhere here. Again, exact location is not essential, but try to kind of place it somewhere in between the edge of the cabinet on this side and a refrigerator. So put it here, uh, any lines that are intersecting through it, in this case, this line doesn't matter because the, the uh, range go, essentially attaches to this line. So whether it passes through it or not, it doesn't matter. You're still going to see a line here anyways. But the upper cabinets, obviously there won't be any cabinets above uh, the range with a microwave overhead. There is a chance of that happening, to be honest, actually I've seen it myself, but for now let's not do this. So trim the uh, upper cabinet line here. Again, if you want to trim it in a certain location, press BR for break. Select in the spot where you want to break it and pull it down to create that distance. Same goes for the, for the refrigerator. We're not going to be putting a cabinet above the refrigerator, which it can be. We can always, I guess I'll leave it up to you. If you want, you can have this line stay here. I would just think everyone will choose because it's easier, less work. You can keep this upper cabinet line here because there are cabinets that go above the refrigerators. I'll keep it like this for now. Again, pull the uh, wall opening a little bit uh, closer to the left so that the cabinet dives and ends at the wall. Once you've done this, another thing that is left is a dishwasher. DW stands for a dishwasher. Again, this is a block. You can copy it from the blocks above and put it right on the line that you've drawn at the window opening. You will see a block already comes in with a few um, lines and colors, and that is just perfect. And put in a DW that stands for a dishwasher over here, and a disp, which if you have, uh, you, most of you might have a disposal in your kitchen sink. That's exactly what it stands for. And if it's on the right side, that's where the disposal should, should go. Put this note, refrigerator note, again, rotate it so that it's rotated towards the left. Finally is the island. The island is going to consist of lines, all of which will be in the first cabinet layer and all of which will be line typed um, by layer, except for this line right here, which is first cabinet layer. You manually change the color to color 30, kind of orange and you change the line type to hidden two. This is going to be your overhang. So this will be an island with cabinets on this side of the island and an overhang on this side. So you can put chairs over here or stools and you can eat from this side and extend your legs. One foot is typically sufficient. So we're putting a new dimension, one foot here. We're putting dimension for how long the island should be and how wide 
and how far away from a from a door opening. So in this case, I put two feet and one eighth of an inch. I could have put two feet, but for the purpose of this video, two feet one eighth uh, of an inch is just fine. All right, so we've done a lot already. We put the room names, we put the, the flooring types, we put the kitchen uh, cabinetry, we put the sink, appliances, the island, uh, we've uh, adjusted a few openings, we put in the shelves, uh, we put in the plumbing fixtures, the arrows showing up or down, we put a note for the garage. Let's do a few more things to make sure that we're going to finalize the sheet layout and the viewport layout on our sheets. Every time you start a CAD project, you should have a layout tab over here with a default viewport. If not, if it's not there, no worries. Let's go over here and let's try to replicate what I've done here right now. You can see here you will have, or, or you will have after you finish this video, a title block as well as a viewport. A viewport of your floor plan. A viewport essentially is um, as is just a view from from your model space in a scale that you want, and it will show up on your sheet. Let's first uh, set up your sheet the way you want to do this, and probably your sheet, your first sheet, will look differently from mine. It will probably not look uh, with with the same size. And how you want to change it. Let's go to the layout, right click, and go to page setup manager. Here, uh, you will probably not have what I have. You probably have something else going on. What I want you to do is to create a new page setup dial box, and it will ask you for start with. You can start with none. Once you do this, you'll see this page. And I'll just simply look at the one that I have and I want you to copy what I have here, except for a few things. Okay, you're going to do a DWG to PDF, select here. You are going to select a paper size, Arc D, but make sure you select Arc D 36 by 24, not 24 by 36. This is not the right orientation. We want 36 by 24 in this orientation. What to plot? Layout. Keep it at the layout because it will print exactly what is shown on your layout, which is right here at the bottom. No offsets, scale one to one, plot object line weights, plot with plot styles, plot paper space. Last, landscape. Quality, presentation quality. In this case, uh, plot style table. What I want you to do if you have this or something else, we're going to change it. How we're going to change it, uh, we'll get to this in just a second. We're going to press on new, start from scratch. You can call it arc 271. I already have this file, so I'm not going to name it arc 271. I'll call it I'll call it arc 271 2. And press finish. Here, as you can see, I already have mine. I'm just going to click on mine and press on this button. You can see uh, on this button, you will see all the colors that AutoCAD understands. There's 255 of them, which is quite quite a few, I would say. Uh, you will be in the form view. What essentially we're going to do in this case, we're going to assign a line weight thickness for each color. So we've already assigned a line weight or a line type for every layer and every line on our drawing. However, this is just for our visual purposes because we have different colors uh, that we look at. However, when you want to plot something or to 
print something, you want to have to have it printed or plotted mostly in one color, black, because it's easier for people to read. It's easier to understand. If you plot yellow color, most likely no one is going to see it. So the industry standard and because it has been for so many years, people are reluctant to change it. So we're going to switch to have everything that you've drawn so far be plotted in black color, but with different line weights. Some, wall, some lines will be thicker than the others. And this is what we're going to work on right now. First and foremost, select uh, color one, scroll all the way down, press shift, so, and click on color 255. Select all of them. In the properties under color, click on black. You probably will have use object color, click on black. So that all of the colors will print as black. Here's the difference. We're going to assign a line weight different for the colors we're going to be using or we have been using so far. I created a handy Excel file that shows you exactly what line weight to assign that to. It will be posted in D2L as well. Essentially index color is the color number here. So color number four is your color four here. The only thing you will need to change after changing the color to black, you change the line weight. You have lots of options. Don't try to type it in. Just use the ones from this list. And as you can see, for color four, cyan, use line weight 0 0.3000. Looking at this example, go through the colors that I've outlined over here and assign a line weight for them once and don't worry about this this is just a note it's what they're used for once you've done this you can save and close once you save and close essentially you're going to save your plot style table and it's going to allow your document go with the color line weights that you have pre-selected for it once you've done all of this you can press on preview and let's both look uh, let's all look at what we've got let's pay very close attention as you can see now we have dashed lines that if under very close inspection are thinner than the interior walls similarly our pantry shelves are thinner than our interior walls our dimensions are thinner than most other lines. For instance, our hidden wall is thinner than our stairs, and so on and so forth. The purpose of assigning weights or our plumbing fixtures are thinner than everything else. The reason why we're assigning the line weights to every color is because we want different line weights to appear on a black and white sheet because it's going to be easier for people to distinguish what is what is a detail versus what is a framing portion of the building. All of our interior and exterior walls are very thick. Things like transitions, carpet to vinyl are not so thick. Exit from here. And now you're good to go to print uh, this PDF if you'd like to. Press OK and you can save it. Now, what I would like you to do, uh, I've also added a um, DWG file with this title block in it. I want you to go in, into that file, it's on D2L, copy this title block and Control V, Control C, Control V into this space. Once you get to the space, uh, try to align it so that it barely, if, if at all, touches these dashed grayed out lines. Why is that important? Well, that is important because these gray, uh, dashed grayed out lines show the place that once if you go over it, those lines are not going to be printed. If you stay within those dashed gray lines, 
everything within them is going to be printed. So try to align your title block to those lines. Again, there is some space uh, for you that you can um, wiggle it on the left and on the right side, but try to make it centered on this sheet. Again, try to have everything inside of it. If your title block is bigger, click on this title block, press on scale, and press at any point over here, press on R, button R, the same point, left, go all the way to where it, where the title block stops, for instance, it stops here, press again, and drag it down to where you want it to be. Essentially what you're doing, you're referencing the title block's length, and now you can adjust the length that you want it to be. And you can adjust it manually to what you think is a good size. Again, no one is expecting per perfection from you. Right now, just adjust it so that it's going to fit in into this outline gray dash lines. Once you've done this, uh, you probably will have a viewport that looks like this or similar. If it does not look, look like this and you want to add a viewport, go to the layout tab at the top and press on rectangular under uh, layout viewports area. Press on this, create a rectangle. If you don't have one already, you don't need to do this if you already have something like this and stretch it out. You, as you can see, everything is very small here. And what we want to do in this case is scale it. The way you scale it is you go to the bottom right corner and select a scale. In this case, you would want to make it probably one eighth of an inch. And you can see once you zoom in, it kind of doesn't allow you to do much. But once you um, double click on the viewport, you can drag and select what you want to be seen. For instance, I dragged it into the floor plan. I double click somewhere else. One click selects the viewport itself, not the view inside of the viewport. You can still edit your file within the viewport, but if you need to first double click into it. So in this case, I want to make this into one eighth of an inch, and this is probably too small. I want to make it into one quarter of an inch. Now you can see my viewport is smaller than my view itself. So I increase the viewport. I double click into it and I try to position the floor plan so that everything, a lot, everything fits into it. I don't change the scale. I increase uh, the viewport itself. I increase, 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 increase up until I have everything that I want in it. Once you do this, click on the viewport and change its layer type. If it's not already, change it to def points so that it's not going to the actual viewport outline is not going to be printed. As you, as you can see, my viewport has an inch and a quarter equals to a foot scale. And everything that I need is within it and position it somewhere around here. Again, no, pre no precise location. Once you select the layer for your, for your viewport and put it onto dev points, make sure you right click on the edge of the viewport and place and go to the display lock and pr press on yes. What this will do is once you get into the viewport and you're, you see now I cannot change the view of the viewport itself. I can still work in it, but even when I double clicked into it, now I cannot move the view of it and I cannot change the scale, which is perfect. It's exactly what I want. Once I set the scale, once I set the view, even if I want to edit something within this view, I still want that view to be the same and the scale to be the same. Now, uh, it is important if you have several similar floor plans, so if you want things to align on every sheet, to have a, a reference for all of those things. 
the way you do this is essentially you draw a line from a corner uh, of your title block because the one thing that remains the same essentially is the outline of your title block on every sheet. This is layout one is going to be your sheet. And this line is going to be essentially a reference from the corner, a center line of this ra radial um, outline to, let's say, in this case, I put it to the second rectangle. It's not within the viewport, it's outside of the viewport. It's actually on the, on the layout. So if I would draw a line here, it's on the layout. It's not in the model space. It's on the layout, uh, on the layout sheet essentially. And the way you want to do it, essentially, this is how I did it. I went from the center of this radial angle to the second rectangle. You can go to the first, whatever. Snap to something. So once you snap it, make sure you change it to def point so it does not get printed. So once I want to preview this, you're not going to see these rectangles because all of them are in def points. So you're not going to see this line. You're going to see the title block and you're going to see everything that's within the viewport. This is how you go to see the preview. You go to print, plot, continue to plot a single sheet and press on preview. Well, in this case, I did not have my exact uh, plot style table. Again, I changed it to arc 271, the one that we've just worked on. Press preview, and there you go. There's no line that is here. There are no rectangles, but everything is nice and clear. If your viewport happens to have a grid within it, which is fine, but you probably do not want to have it in there. If it looks something like this, press on control G. Again, control G and it goes away. Let's go ahead and change the layout name to, you just right click and rename and change it to A3, make sure it's capital, A3 space dash space first floor plan. That should suffice. And at this point, we will end this video because you've co we've covered pretty much everything we need to do for this portion of the project. Thank you.